Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is a bit of a take apart of the DM02. Well, it's already a part, but a look at the DM02 motor. There were quite a lot of questions concerning the similarity between this motor and the Tongsheng TSDZ2 motor. If you look at the two motors from the outside, they do look strikingly similar. The designer of these motors, though, also designed the Tongsheng TSDZ2. So really, it's not that shocking that there are similarities in the structure and type of the motor. He left Tongsheng apparently to have freedom to make motors that he wanted to. I was invited by 27 to send a bunch of questions that myself and people that viewed the channel had. I've had those questions back. So hopefully this video will answer some of the questions as to where these two motors differ. Thanks to Mr. Ma and the translators at 27 for taking the time to get these questions answered. This is definitely not going to be a this versus that video. I don't actually have a Tongsheng motor, but I can show you the DMO2 here and outline the strengths of this motor and where key choices have been made and people can make up their minds. If people have questions still based on this video, please put them in the comments and in the next little while, I'll piece together a Q&A with the most common things. I'm going to start on the gear side. The main gear is actually hidden away behind um, a plastic cover here. And some of the questions uh, were about waterproofing. So that's kind of a good time to look at that really. Reading on the forums, uh, waterproofing was one of the areas um, where the Tongsheng had issues with. So I was told that a lot of effort was put into the waterproofing. And uh, I can see and feel what looked like quality gaskets here. There's one, this is for uh, the main gear. And then there is also one um, here and that seals up against the, the core of the motor here. It was also pointed out to me that in the middle here, um, the seal for the, for the oil seal has been designed to be as small as possible, uh, basically to reduce the resistance um, that you will get on the output shaft. So when this, this turns, it's turning against uh, a smaller surface area. Um, so there's less resistance when, when pedaling the bike. That's also the reason why the chain ring is held on with a lock ring rather than a kind of a, a bolt pattern. The axle itself uh, apparently has been beefed up by a few millimeters over similar designs. So just a bit of extra thickness to this whole thing to, to give it some more strength. On this area, you also have the, the sprag clutch. I'm told that there is uh, some kind of patent involved with the sprag clutch on this one. I'm not going to be popping the, the ring here and um, removing the circlip and pulling all of this out. I need to know a little bit more about how it goes together before I feel comfortable doing that. I also want to get this back on the bike as soon as possible. But essentially this is this is quite a large sprag clutch and it's been designed to be sort of that large to withstand, to withstand greater torque and have uh, increased reliability as a result. Another advantage apparently with this design is that when you pedal the bike uh, without power, um, the, the gears of the motor don't turn. Um, so it, it's easier to pedal it like without power running through it um, because there's less resistance essentially. So if I if I turn this around, uh, there were quite a lot of questions about uh, the blue gear, um, which is one of the reduction gears and it's made out of nylon. It can be found in many similar motors of this type. In the past, this part in particular was associated with extremely high failure rates. Uh, I've been told apparently that the, the main point of failure was the use of needle bearings inside of this. And so this design for this motor uses uh, a different way with, with bearings. And 27 feel this is a, a more robust uh, technique. This motor has also been designed overall to run considerably cooler. And it's the heat that also has an effect on, on the nylon gears. Inside of this side of the unit is the, the torque sensor. And the torque sensor on this motor, I'm told, is a strain resistance pressure sensor. I don't profess to be the fountain of all knowledge on torque sensors, but apparently this type is more accurate and safe in operation over previous sensors used in this type of motor. 
The previous ones I'm told are notorious for having the zero point wonder. And essentially that's pretty essential. So the system reads zero torque when there's no force applied to it. And when this wanders, you can get erratic power application when starting and stopping paddling. So let's move on to the motor core. And the motor core is probably where the biggest differences between the Tongsheng and this one are. So the Tongsheng, from what I hear, overheated like crazy because there was an air gap between the motor core and the casing to the point where people used heat transfer, shims, all kinds of stuff to basically eliminate this air gap. And with this motor, you can see that it's been pressed into the casing. So the hole was machined out and it was pressed into a precise place. And that means that there's direct heat transfer from the motor core into the outer casing. I've heard already from several dealers that are reviewing this motor that it's staying within its limits at power levels and stresses that would have overheated the Tongsheng motor quite a long time ago. I'm not an electrical or mechanical engineer by trade, but my dad was a physics teacher and he taught me quite a few things. And I, I know for sure that an air gap is not good for conduction of heat. Um, that's why we have double glazed windows. Uh, you can see the effect of the air gap with heat buildup with the CYC photon. But in their case, that's because they used an outrunner. And with the Tong Shen, the air gap was a design choice, basically to save money on tooling. Um, I'll try and bring it into focus as well. You've got the rotor here as well. And looking at it, I, I like the way the magnets are keyed in. It's not quite as secure as with like an IPM rotor, but I can see this one being pushed quite a bit further without having to worry about magnets coming loose or anything like that. In fact, I'm, I'm very interested to see how far this can be pushed once we, you know, maybe change that blue gear for a peak gear. To me, it looks like a well-made motor. The design choices make logical sense. And once I'm back riding in the summer heat, I should be able to show pretty clearly what the limits are with the motor. I think there's room for improvement. I do look at it from a design perspective and I'm excited because I think there is quite a bit of potential to be squeezed out still. I don't want to put a number on how much I think this motor can be pushed, but I think beyond the current 900 watts, it is pretty doable. I mean, if it's done that so far um, with other people, I, I don't see why, why it can't hold that and maybe go on beyond that a bit more as well. There are also lots of questions that I had about the menu systems and parameters, which I'm just gonna sum them up briefly. Basically, I wanted to know whether the control parameters that were accessed by the program by the programming cable could be added to the menu system with the screen and keypad, and it was confirmed that would be possible. The menu system itself is also adjustable if it did need to be, which is great because I think refining the menu system and making a few changes to the way the graphics look is like an absurdly easy win for them. The last area is that of repair. And as something that's important to me, people should be able to fix their belongings, especially if it's their transport. Uh, for what I've been told, parts will be available. Everything can be taken apart with regular tools. Parts will be available through the same dealer network that the motors will be bought from and procedures will be in place for people to perform those repairs at home or if they want to take them in to a dealer then they can do those repairs there as well anyway that's all i've got for this motor right now uh, hopefully it's cleared up a few things if it's just raised more questions then post them in the comments um, thank you to mr ma and the staff at 27 for taking the time to answer the questions I'm going to do more of a video on the controller side of things once I get the programming cable. As always, though, thanks for watching and a huge thanks to all the channel members. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.